Um, what else is there? Um, um, so yeah, what is, what is my hope? My hope is that everyone just sort of teams up together, works together, mm. everyone brings out the best in themselves, um, and we just look back and go, look how well we did without Victor, you know? And then that frees me up, um, and then if I'm able to, then we'll, when we when I come back, you know, if we're able to create this company that is so much better and there's more money, then we can spread that money out to everyone and everyone gets paid better as well, you know? Because I do know, like, it's just the whole world doesn't make sense financially right now, you know? Like, there's less jobs, people are under more stress, but the price of things are going up and it doesn't always make sense why things are... A price of things are going up as well when they really shouldn't be and it feels like it's being you know the general humans being very much put under stress put under it's like a no win game for everyone right now so no matter I'm just presuming I'm looking at everyone's perspective from all over the world that works here um, you know you know if you live wherever you live say you live in um, the Philippines you know you've got the cost of petrol and stuff going up and the cost of your groceries going up, but there's less jobs to go around. You know? So, and then if you do get a job, there's so much pressure on you to perform that it's your quality of life is terrible. You know, and then in the West is just a completely different game altogether, where the government's just um, nothing makes sense. What's going on here? You know, it just feels like um, it just feels like people have just given up. They're just like, I'm just gonna. Um, I'm just going to get taken for a ride, you know what I mean? And we don't have a choice. Like, what do we do about the government policies and decisions and all that kind of stuff? It's just, um, yeah. So, in the face of all this, in the face of bad economic circumstances, in the face of all this, all these rules that are set up, you know, I'm going to be honest with, you know, all the teams and rules and, you know, legal and everybody else. Um, if you look at a rule or a legislation that's set up, you know, you've got to, for a second, just think, okay, if this rule wasn't there, how would I get the result? Because sometimes so many rules get set up that it's impossible to get anything done as a company. And, you know, no matter what you do, there's rules on both, both ends. If you do this, you get in trouble. If you do this, you get in trouble. So you get stuck between all these rules, right? And then, so you've got to, for one moment, go, okay, if there's no rules, what would I do? And then you've got to try to sort of negotiate with the people that have set up these rules to sort of work around them or work... Not in a bad or a negative way, but otherwise we'll literally just close down and shut down as a company. And this is happening everywhere, throughout, everywhere, you know? Just, um, uh, the rule makers and the governments are just um, making rules, so many rules that you literally, your hands, your tie, your legs, everything are tied up, you can't function as a company. And I think, you know, that's for many reasons, it is, you know, over management. And I don't even think the, the rule makers are evil people or bad people. They just mistakenly do this. So it's all people, you know, the rule makers are like, okay, we've got to make these rules, you know, to protect the people. But in protecting the people, they crush any kind of business, any kind of productivity, any kind of progress in the world. You know? So just keep that in mind as well. Um, um, yeah, so... Um, you know, I can specifically see, you know, even though there's about, you know, a lot of people working here, I can see really only five or seven people that are putting 130% right now. I can see, you know, in as office staff, the other 30, 40, 50, some are putting 8 out of 10%, 8 out of 10, you know, of themselves, some are putting 5 out of 10 and there's a few, one or two, that I don't even know what they're doing. I mean, and I'm, I'm questioning it. Um, subcontractors and the people around us, there's so much more they can do for us, you know, that they're not doing, they're not, they're not getting the videos, they're not getting the customer testimonials, you know, they're not getting, um, they're not letting the customer know that they've got further issues at the house. So much they're not doing for us, you know. They're, some of them, I'm not saying they're not putting in a huge effort. In their mind, they're like, Vic, I'm putting 100 out of 10 effort. But in my mind, they're not doing what I need necessarily done. You know? So we need to get them on board and convince them of that. Um, what else is there? Um, um, yeah, I guess 
very, very grateful for what everyone has put in and um, does make me really, you know, encourage me. Like, what encourages me is, you know, when, when I see people put in such a huge effort, I think about them and it gets me going and I'm like, I'm willing to take the risk. I'm willing to come to work the next day. I'm willing to keep going as a company because I have these great people on board because I know how hard it is to find great people around you. It's, I've, you know, I've worked with thousands of people.